Probably one of the best swan songs that I have seen for a console generation, Ghost of Tsushima on the PlayStation 4 has delivered in a way that I really did not expect. And now that the fanboying's out of the way. No, it's a very good game, and I think it's a great note to end this console generation on. But um, I will say this. I thought that The Last of Us 1 was actually a better swan song in terms of just raw storytelling and uh, the graphics for its era. Um, obviously, Ghost of Tsushima is very pretty. But um, yeah, so thank you for checking out A Drink with Crazy. This is going to be our review and in-depth discussion of Ghost of Tsushima. And uh, there will be some spoilers ahead. So if you just want to know the quick and dirty, great game. Check it out if you're interested. Buy it. It's worth it, guys. It's such a fun, absolutely phenomenal uh, playthrough. It really is just a good time. And without any further ado, let's get into the review for Ghost of Tsushima, which starts. No timer today. Yeah. No timer on this video. Right. We're going to go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that notification bell, and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. So coming into this uh, in into this game with the little marketing that it had and just... Uh, oh, I remember because I was like, hey, it's another big Sony exclusive. We probably should cover this on the channel. And you're like, dude, really? The Samurai game? Really? I genuinely expected this game to be like if we had to rank it like my initial thoughts were it was going to be a 6. It was going to be a 6 out of 10. I was like hey, it's going to be Not it's going to be like punch. it's going to be like good enough to like to like probably like play but and maybe that, not good enough to like recommend, right? Which is a weird thing to say. It's a right. And, then, and if you buy the thing, you probably wouldn't regret yeah. it. But you're not going to go out and say, you know, you have to check this out, right? And then almost immediately, well, not immediately, um, we are yeah, pretty much immediately because uh, I remember we, when we were first in and from that first cavalry charge at uh, Komoda. Well, no, that was really fun. But you know where the game sold me was the title screen. Oh, yeah. After you go through and the con has whooped your ass. Throwing you off a bridge, you follow the wind, you have the multiple flashbacks with Lord Shimra, and then, you know, you meet Yuna, you, you ride your what, horse. we're, what, an hour and a half at this point? Something like that. And then you're just riding down, the music swells, and Sucker Punch presents and you're just in Ghost this of Tsushima. you're just in this beautiful, you're just in yeah. this beautiful field of white flowers, and what a great present. We actually, I still, we actually uh, have that. We actually started clapping on stream we yes were just we did like wow what That's, a great that was what a great and way to title end. intros can set the tone for so much and that was a great one uh, other the uh other great ones would be like assassin's creed 2 mm -hmm. um yeah i i know and i i think that you're absolutely right there so let's get into some of it one of the first things that really really stood out to me was just the pop in color and just how no, it is a gorgeous game it's not the most visually um technical it's not an rdr2 it's no. not a crisis it's, it's not a, even a, a the last of us 2 i think the last of us 2 had some phenomenal textures although i have problems with the narrative of that game but well um, technically it's fine but no um in terms of the raw technicals it's not quite on the same level it's close but it's not quite on the same level but the color pop is just one of those i took so many screenshots and we'll throw some of those up here yeah so many screenshots that were just, they're just beautiful to look at. I love the one where you put the uh, the title card next and you're like in the forest in the moonlight. Oh, in the moonlight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then no, the yeah. other one I really liked was when you're napping with uh, Kage. Yeah. The horse. Yeah. 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 No. And uh, uh, my playthrough was predominantly off stream. We did uh, my playthrough was kind of the start of like our first impressions. His playthrough is all on uh, Twitch as of right now. Anyway, um, we can I, save the odds of that if we care. Yeah, to, I think that. Uh, I think that the, the 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 colors were just so engaging from the beginning, and the, um, with the draw distance and whatnot. The only game I've seen better with a better draw distance is RDR two. No, well, and that, I mean, you know, you're, you're talking oh, Rockstar. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's Rockstar. Yeah. Those guys have kind of earned their arrogance in the in the game. I'm not. I'm not even talking the gold um, standard. I'm talking the platinum standard. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Rockstar really has earned uh, their clout. But no, I think that you're right. I think because I've seen because you've shown me some RDR too, and yeah. I think that you're absolutely right. Is that uh, Ghost of Tsushima does compete on the draw distance level and just giving you that picturesque frame and well, again, all of a sudden you round up a hill and you just have this panoramic view. And all the color and whatnot. Now, RDR2 is a lot more like, we'll say, realistic in coloration. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ghost of Tsushima is very stylized. It is very painting-esque. Yes. And there's so many paintings that you want to capture in this game. That's just something that just jumps out of you almost immediately. 
And uh, I, I think that that is also captured by the um, uh, uh, the world around you, just the movement, the flow, how everything is just always mm-hmm. there. The leaves are blowing, the wind is blowing, the the grass is moving. The and so and it does this g- wonderful contrast with your character, which can be very still in moments, and the world around him is moving. Yes, and you just you feel and holy crap, the particle effects. There are so many particle effects. <laughs> they could. Uh, they could have backed off a little bit on the particle effects. I think in some instances, but for the I most mean, part, it definitely works. Uh, no, and it's, uh, we're not the only ones to say that because sometimes <laughs> it's, you're just like, "What? It, what? What is moving all this? <laughs> like, holy crap!" Um, but no, the uh, and and very very great, and also that ties into the navigation system, which obviously we love. The whole you know, I the thought wind. the navigation system caught me off the start, and I have been raving about the navigation system <laughs> and the minimal HUD, which are are two things that kind of go into the mechanics. But the navigation system. The fact that they tied the navigation system into the beauty of their world and into mm-hmm. the beauty of the landscape and how those colors contrast. Oh, I absolutely. mean, they knew exactly what they were doing. And I have said that they're na- the navigation system of using the wind, you swipe up on the uh, on the touchpad of yeah. the PlayStation 4, and this wind guides you to where you want to go, and it moves the world around you. And again, you're very still in some moments. And, and what's so cool is that when you get into some standoffs or some engagements, that wind is still blowing and it's still behind you and you're and you're cutting down enemies and you're just oh it's so Oh every good. everything about the game just oozes style. Oh it and, does. and flash. Like and that oh. was something I remember talking to him about too, is uh just for uh what I think was um forty to fifty hour playthrough. Uh, I think I did mine about thirty five, thirty seven. I think mine was about forty. Um Yeah, 40. you went for a little bit more than I did for sure. Yeah, and um all of a sudden, you know, the combat never got old. Which is weird, right? Because you would think that the combat would get old, but there's so much. That's one of the things that I had uh, mentioned to you the other night is that whether you're playing on easy, if you need an easy difficulty, I played on medium, he played on hard. The combat system feels like... It makes you feel like a badass. it, it It makes you feel like a badass, and it makes you feel excited on no matter what difficulty you're playing on and it makes you feel like you're and, and competent every, to the game because i don't think that the, the the combat system ever made at whatever level you're playing it made you feel like you weren't competent oh indeed it's not a, like a souls game or like no. Sekiro. um no this, no it's and the, no 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 and the whole which those are games that are meant to push you to the limits but no and this and whether you're using stealth or melee or ranged mm-hmm. or whatever and I know that there were a couple shots on my playthrough I was doing with the bow, and you were just like, holy crap. Well, and, and no, and, and that was so good is that the combat, and what's so great about the combat is like uh, Matt and I, we, we play very similarly, but yet different. And that's so interesting because I knew how I played. And, and so I would like, you know, he'd be playing on Twitch, and I'd be watching. I'm like, hey, dude, like I would have done this here. And he, and he totally took a different route. Like he'd oftentimes ride up and do this, this beautiful standoff, and, and he'd just start cutting people down and just – and and how amazing that standoff is. And for me personally, mm-hmm. I would either sneak in or I'd jump off my horse and just come down and just, bam! You know what I mean? And just this. Well, uh, I approached know, it very much like a samurai, whereas I think you were more like. I actually Kratos. don't. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of. I, 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 I will say this is that. What was so interesting is there were moments in the game that I was watching where you would come up to an engagement and like like you'd have to clear a Mongol infested area. Yeah. Which is so awesome because you walk in these areas and all of a sudden it's boom, Mongol territory and you're like Yes. And you just you yeah, kind of get that, get that, that feeling. You're just like, all right, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. And <laughs> and oftentimes Matt would rip that bow and boom, 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 and like three dudes would drop and my playthrough. Um, so he would use his bow to eliminate some of those extra enemies to get them out of the way quick. My playthrough, I would sneak through and I'd do some quiet stealth assassinations to eliminate, and then I'd go into the in, in, into the into the fight. You know, then yeah. I'd go in, and it's so interesting to just see the compare and contrast because you and I did play very similarly, but there we played so differently in certain areas. That oh, it's I know. Very well. In- I was very much into the stand up fight because I'd almost always start off with a standoff, which knocks three dudes out. Yeah. And then I'd go into that bow because the people would be like the Mongols would just be like, "Ooh," and then, yeah. you know, the bow starts ripping. And then when I unlocked it, then I'd go into the ghost stanch go yes. stance and then i'd actually go into Which, full and on by like, the really. way just the just the 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 paying homage to you know kurosawa uh, kurosawa and, yeah 
is so beautiful. Oh, the ghost dancer puts I, you in this black and white filter. I know that there is every a time you hit it, every time you hit an enemy, it turns red. I, and, I, yeah. I think that the I think that the ghost dance was a really great homage. I know that they did a Kurosawa mode, which I did not play on because I again. Uh, definitely. Maybe that's what I need to do for my second playthrough: is Kurosawa mode with uh, Japanese uh, voiceover and right. English subtitles. That would be really cool. Because yeah. um, I definitely want to do a second playthrough. But no, and, and so Matt says, you know, he's going to go in there, he's going to stand off, take out three dudes real quick, and then he's going to bow some people down. And like me, I snuck in and I just go knife, 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 knife. And then when people started noticing me, I'd start going to like my throwables or whatever, you know, and I'd start throwing kunai and start throwing bombs and then and eliminate some of those guys and catch some people on fire. And then I'd run in and I'd just hack and slash my way through a bunch of dudes. And I just think the sheer variety that you get into in this game that it just gives you in it. And this game makes you want to use the variety. There was only one thing if I have to knock uh, one of the varieties is the flaming sword I felt. I never used Actually, no, that's not true. I you did. You used it in one of the climactic fights. I did, I did uh, see well, that. This, this is a spoiler review. So if you don't want spoilers, this is your last warning. Yeah. No, in um. so in three... Two, two, one, one spoilers. spoilers. So in the fight against Koten Khan, that final, mm -hmm. that final yeah. fight when you're on the boat, and he lit his sword and I lit mine, yeah. and we just went for it. I saw that. I was yeah. watching that, and that was so beautiful. That was so picturesque. And um, again, you know, not necessary. And I still go back to uh, when I first, in the first uh, part of that fight, because that's like a three-phase fight. You've got him in the one-on-one -on -one duel. Then you've got. I him. thought that that was wonderful how they did. And that. then you've got him with the lance, and then you've got him with the sword and shield. Mm -hmm. But no, um, after the one-on-one -on -one duel, um, then uh, I get to the ship, and I'm sitting there, and I'm you know beating back everybody, beating back everybody. I go into my little you know bullet time thing with the bow, and I just you know sit there and just. Which is called drop. you know concentration or focus. Yes, and then I draw you know three of the archers up top just drop because I'd upgraded the half bow so much it was a one shot even to the chest. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, and so just man, I should have done that. And <laughs> um, then uh, got ghost stance, and so Coton's sitting there with his big halberd looking thing. I just go into ghost stance, and I just boom, boom, and on the third one, I hit, and his you know uh, spear breaks, and I th it'll do that either way if you do enough damage. But just going into that ghost stance to do that was so. Just appropriate. Like, it, it just, just it, feels, it just it well, felt like the, a movie, that, and I was just like, uh, and that was something completely gameplay related. That was a choice I made. I could have just fought him, exactly. you know, in the wind stance and been fine. Yeah. But no, going into that ghost stance where it went black and white, and on that third hit, it shatters. I mean, what a kind of just movie esque moment. Yeah. And the the presentation is just phenomenal. The combat is phenomenal. I the, really, I, really enjoyed I, that. I cannot... I love the combat because of just the amount that it gives you. It just says, Oh, hey. the fact that what I just subscribed is a possibility, right? Like, it doesn't... Yeah, exactly. It doesn't... You know, because we always complain about, like, Call of Duty campaigns where they pigeonhole you into doing one thing at a mm -hmm. time. You either... You go loud, you go in quiet. It's one or the other. And in this game, you... you it goes, here are your tools. And, Here's and your objective. sometimes, guess what? Sometimes you go in loud. Sometimes you go in quiet. Sometimes you go in to distract... And sometimes, and, and you know, outside of, I think, three or four story missions, there is no force stealth. No, no. And, and, and I really do believe that that is just such and a And the force stealth missions tend to be more like um, sneak in, sneak out types, not... Because, right. uh, you know, something you and I were talking about is that when it comes to stealth games, I'm not so good at the... Um, right. The, the, stealthy, the, 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 the ghost, the ghost sort of stealth. Right. I'm right. better at like being the predator. I yeah, want to. Yeah, 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 I want to yeah. strike from the trees and then retreat back in and then hit you from over here and then over here. And yeah, then yeah. Over here. Well, and you kind of can do that in this game if you really want to. If you really choose. Oh, doggo moves, doggo moves. If uh, I, I really think that you can. Uh, sorry, we're you know house sitting a doggo and the doggo decided it was going to go get uh, get some people's. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, no, and I, I really think that that's one of those things that is just so good. Um, one thing that really, really surprised me here is the uh, the mission structure. Um, okay, that the, one you have to explain a little bit. Okay, no, so mission yeah. structure is your mission structure is you have your gold missions on your map. Oh, that's what you're talking that's about. That's okay. what I'm talking about. So you have your gold missions that are obviously your mainline stories, right? Then you have what I like to call your silver plus and silver minus missions. Well, you those, have so you gold, have silver, companion, and silver. Yeah, well, well, but they're both, but the but the the silver and the companion are still both silver on the map. Well, yeah. so that's why I call them silver plus and silver minus. So you have your gold, then you have your silver plus, which are your companion. missions. 
missions, which you're meeting these companions to accomplish your gold missions, and then they have their own quests that you go do. And then you have your yes. real actual silver missions over here. Which are truly which are, the side. You know, they're their side. You kind of get your story elements from there. And then you really have, like, these side quests, which kind of present this idea and this emotion of what people in this world are going through, the NPCs, so to speak. Yeah. And you always Whether feel like you're... you know, uh, helping a uh, woman find her father who supposedly got attacked by a kappa. You know, or you're or, helping this father who is carrying his newborn try to, to, to get to a safe place. Yeah. Or, or maybe, you know, you're meeting this group of thugs that decided that they no longer want to be thugs and they're going to fight and they're going to do the honorable thing and take care of their own people. Yep. And you just see so many different elements of what a war-torn area can do between all of these different uh, places and uh, through, through the whole world. And I, I will say this, I think that the only thing that really suffered in this structure was learning more about your character. I, I think that I th they did I, so much with the world that they probably could have done a little bit more with Jin, Jin Sakai. Uh, I, I don't know. I always thought that between the incidental dialogue and his interactions with like oh, Yuna. Oh, that's right. That's right. And with Yuna and whatnot. I, I, don't, I don't have an issue with the way they handled Jin. I always knew who Jin Sakai was. No, no. And I did. And I did like, again, you know my favorite uh, yeah. mission, where yeah. you kind of meet, you know, again, what I love about this is you do have a surrogate father, surrogate mother sort of storyline in in the main yeah, character. Yeah, with uh, uh, Shimura being the uh, surrogate father and then this uh, character Yuriko being the yeah. surrogate mother. And I just thought that there were, they were so well done. The game felt so well paced and you never felt like you were waiting to get along with the story because if you were running around just romping around the world, finding the new locations, the undiscovered stuff, these things that would... like I'm sorry, I love the bamboo strikes. Those are so fun. The oh, bamboo yeah, it's, strikes it's, are it's, great. The bamboo the, strikes give you what's called resolve, and the resolve is kind of helps you like with your stamina. specials. It's like, exactly. It's like your stamina. It helps you with your specials. You can use resolve to heal yourself if you're damaged, and you go to these bamboo strikes, and it starts out with three buttons, and you're like... Okay, XOX, whatever. And then it goes to five buttons. It's like XOX, L1, X. And you're like, okay. All right, all right. And then all of a sudden, XOX, L1, XXO. And you're like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> like, wait a minute. I need to think about this one. <laughs> you just, you just kind of stop. And you're like, how much? And you strike these things down and you gain more resolve. Mm -hmm. and, and the way, and the, and the shrines, the shrines look so beautiful. The shrines. Oh, the shrines, which are like their environmental, their platforming puzzles, right? Exactly. They, they are so well done. They look so good. And then they give you uh, what are called charms, which give you small buffs to your, your power, whether it's yeah. healing after a kill or, uh, or um, damage resistance or uh, bow, that would be or a bow lesser, damage. That'd be or, a lesser charm. The shrines give you the gold charms. So that's like uh, more forgiving a uh, parry window, healing after a kill, um, assassinates never alert, you know things like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. All that's built so, around well, a play no, style. And, exactly, yeah. and like I said, and in, in, in finding these things, and there's fox dens as well. But in finding all this, you never felt like because you were like, wait a minute, why am I doing all this? And you're like, oh, because I wanted to. You yeah. never felt well, like it's the like, game was telling I, I you think to. On mine, I'm missing like two or three of the fox dens, but I wanted to keep doing them because I was using one of the charms called uh, the charm of Inari's might which got upgraded the more I did. Mm -hmm. And so if I did them all, all of a sudden, it's like having another layer of armor on because it gives me a massive amount of health yeah. and melee damage. And you never felt like as you went through this game, going through this open world, this beautiful picturesque open world, you never felt like the game was forcing you into it because it wasn't. No, and you I, could've, We could have just mainlined the story and what do you think? Five to ten hours? Nah, probably more like fifteen. But um, oh, you think fifteen for the main line? Well, well, okay. Are we talking only gold? Or are we talking gold and companion? Only gold. Companion? Only, o gold. Then, only yeah, gold. Then maybe five or ten. Now, I would not do that. I would say the minimum that you have to do in this game, the minimum you have to do in is this game, is golden companion. Is the golden companion stories yep. because there's so much there. But because we could have. My favorite was probably still. Uh, I, I'm torn in uh, my favorite between uh, Norio and uh, Lady Masako. Norio was that. That was a rough. Um, I am. I think that Yoriko's small story that she had, because you got to learn so much about Jin Sakai. See, I just, the way that played out, especially with her, you know, passing there at the end of it, um, I kind of wish that she was introduced earlier. That's the, I think that would No, no, no. And I, I don't disagree with that, but because how much you got to learn about Jin. No, I just, no, they're I still very that. good. I, I'm just I, saying, I, I think it would have had well, a no, but, better. But that's what's so, that's the good thing about this game. You've already chosen your favorites. And I've definitely chosen oh, well, my yeah. favorites. And actually, one of my favorites is the Lady Masako story. I think that Norio probably takes a spot number three for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I can rank them, but I'm not entirely no, sure well, I can but say. No, you can't. 
That's what's so awesome about this no, game. No, because they're have, all really, really, really is we good. have two different people here that played it all the way through from start to finish, and we have two different experiences, and I think that our amazement in this... One of the things I will talk about, and this will be a not-spoiler moment, I am not going to spoil this moment, is the last few moments. Well, I do think we need to uh, talk about it, and so... Um, and gee, please give away no names. Please give away no nothing. Just, just that final duel. Just that. What a final way! The, a few games have the balls, and, and to especially end to on give that. you the choice to that. Yeah, that is that, the that ultimate. Does, that it does. And yeah. it, it, the way the ending plays out is: Does Jin still have some of that samurai honor, or has or, he completely become the ghost? Yeah. And so the way they did that, and the ending. That was I. I there. Like, I made the one choice. I did not make the other. And so I, I don't know what the other one... I made the, the same one, choice that you did. And so I don't know quite how I would have felt with that one, but I made the choice that felt right. I did. Yeah, and, me too. Um, uh, what a, what a um, somber and just poetic and in a weird way, kind of beautiful moment to end on. And that's, and that's one of the things that I think that... And very samurai. <laughs> well, and, and again, they, they could have ended... They could have botched the ending. They could have botched the ending so hard. And oh, endings not. are very easy to botch. Now, I know that we were talking about it. You said that the ending gave it a little bit of a higher regard for you. And I said now, because the ending, while important, it neither uh, well, improves and it, and or it, and it destroys what it gave me before. that higher regard because of its setting, because of the poetry and the setting, as, yeah, I, I, yeah. as I told you about. Again, I, I really don't want to give anything away here. No, but it made uh, trust us, guys. This is, this is something that's probably best gone in blind yeah, on this one part. Yeah, you guys need to go in blind to this ending because... Yeah. And you go and, and 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 really truthfully, it made me reflect on, it made me reflect on. Um, oh, I see. Dude, pass oh, in the shoes. Oh. Sorry, I see what he's saying now. It made me reflect on. Uh, um, here, hand me the yeah. child. <laughs> you dicks. Um, no, and I uh, think that's, uh, I really do believe that this game ended on a note that was very reflective on the rest of the game. And that's kind of what elevated this for me in the regard that very few games that I know of, you kind of get to that and you go, yeah, cool. Very few games that at least I've played make me really just stop and just ponder the whole game and go... Oh, I, I felt like I was going to tear up, to be honest. I, well, I called you afterwards, and yeah. I, I was just speechless, I, cause, especially because I wanted you to go in blind. And that's one of those hard things about this ending is that if you're trying to tell your buddies how good the ending is, but you want them to experience, you really are speechless. It really does just make you go, wow. I, what? I, th I, th I think few my, games, few games have, have the to balls to end like this. I, I'd have to did. double check the VOD, but I think my uh, exact words at the end of that were, fuck. <laughs> few so, games have the balls to do this. Um, few so games no, have ending, to, to so end on a, on a note like that. We, we've, um, we've, I think, expressed our admiration for the ending. But as a, the narrative as a whole, I found well presented, but... Oh, it's a typical narrative. It's, it's, it's totally pretty, it, typical. It, it, it's not something I but haven't you, seen before. No, no. But you know what? I, I'm so tired of people trying to go for stuff that we haven't seen before because humans have been telling stories for well, at yes. least and it's, several it, thousand years it, it, at this kinda, point. It's kind of like, you know, somebody seasoned your favorite dish very, very well, right? Like, yeah, you've eaten it a thousand times. It's your favorite dish, but they put a little different seasoning in it that just makes it that. It's the same thing, but it just tastes that little different and it's really good. Well, it, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that it's, it is – nothing in this game is game-changing to games, but everything in this game – No, this feels like – it feels like a well-executed Assassin's this, Creed no, for the this, most part. No, this, this game feels like an homage to all of the games before it this, because this is, it does take – it takes from so many other games, but everything that it does is so well executed. The most, the most I get out of it is it's like a hodgepodge between uh, Assassin's Creed and Witcher 3. And it's very well executed. It doesn't quite achieve the uh, highs of Witcher 3, and especially in terms of its side quests. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of its structure is borrowed from it. Though I will say this, its combat is a lot better. I think that this game... Witcher 3 does not have bad combat, but it's not as good as this. The, this, game, this game has combat just on, a, on an enjoyable level. It's not even another level. It's just you're, you're always enjoying the combat. But 
I think that this game decided that they're not going to try to build a new box. They're like, we have our toolbox here, but we can polish and, that box a little and bit. And every we can tool we can that spruce it up, use. maybe put a put a cool little like stencil or. Oh no no no! I think yeah. that everything that they did was so. Ma- I think that this game is just masterfully executed. It's not anything that we haven't seen before, but it is masterfully well done. I and, would I would agree with that. It's not you know groundbreaking, but it is uh, very well executed. I love the presentation, the combat. The narrative, the whole fall of a samurai from the, the narrative. Here's although we've seen the narrative before, yeah. the narrative never lulls. I never felt no, like it, it trailed when, off from when Jin meets Yuna after the disastrous battle of Komoda, which, by uh, the way, is historical. Which for you history nerds out there, yeah, that's a holy. That's, yeah, no, the, the Mongols really did invade in 1274. They really did land at Komoda Beach, mm-hmm. and they really did wipe out the small retainer of samurai there. Mm-hmm. And uh, then proceeded to occupy the island. And again, they never made it to the uh, mainland. Fun fact, uh, both the first and second Mongol invasions were wiped out by a storm, a typhoon. And... uh, Oh, don't give that one away, but well done. And um, that is where we get the term kamikaze, meaning divine wind. Interesting. And also, just if you want to talk about having a long memory... Um, it was their belief from the defeat of the Mongols because of the typhoons that the Japanese mainland could never be invaded, a belief held until the end of World War II. So that being said, years. So that being <laughs> said, um, Matt, what all right, what would you score this game? And would you so, recommend, not recommend, highly recommend, or Anything in between. So What's your do, score? Do you want a numerical score or do you just want a recommendation? I think that I want both. Okay. Um, so I just... Because I'm going to get both. Because based on what I've seen, like I said, it's... Um, I've seen um, uh, open worlds that are better in The Witcher 3. Uh, the side questing is better. Some of the uh, just environmental is a bit better in The Witcher 3. Um, what this game definitely takes over that is combat. Um, outside of that mission structure, the tailing missions, the uh, sneaking missions. Actually, there aren't too many tailing missions. There's like one, maybe two. Um, but all of that mission structure-wise, very Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's a very well executed this Assassin's This is a Creed. way better Assassin's Creed than, than Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed yeah. has been in yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed has not done this well in a long time. I don't know. Origin was pretty good. Um, but this good? No, probably not. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Assassin's Creed has so not been. So, if this- I had to rate everything, the narrative, the fall of a samurai and the rise of the ghost, the uh, the side characters of Ishikawa, Lady Masako, Norio, uh, Yuna, uh, Taka, Kenji, Kenji, Kenji. Kenji's Ken- Ken- awesome. Kenji's were just so fun. Dude. I love I Kenji. Love Kenji, he's so great. Oh, lots of Kai. You don't like hiding in my sake barrels? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like hiding in my sake barrels? I love Kenji, dude. <laughs> and he's just like. Well, I uh, might have stole it from some straw hats. And he's just like, <laughs> and <Kenji." laughs> It's like, oh, all right, all right, all right. And so, no, Kenji, Kenji's great. So I love the characters. Actually, the character is something this The characters does. are so uh, interesting. Even Lord Shimura with his uh, very, Lord Shimura is the samurai. He is a samurai. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. And so I Score. love. I Score love, and recommendation. I've got to explain this. <laughs> and so if I walk people through it, you know, and I'm totally not stalling for time here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so good. Actually, that's one thing I will say. This game, you don't want to stop talking about this game. And so and we've been talking about it. No, for- based on everything, um, mission structure, graphics, uh, music. Music's a big one for me. And I love the score oh, in this game. It's so beautiful. And, oh, I forgot uh, about that. And um, all of that. I would say that numerical, I'd give this game an eight and a half, 8.5. Mm-hmm. And I would say it's a very strong recommendation. Um, if you only buy one game this year, this is a solid bet. This is, yeah. At least while you're waiting for Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, I think that as a swan song for the PlayStation 4, what a great swan song to end on. Again, everything that you said, the characters are so endearing. The visuals are so eye-catching in the beginning. This game has, has moments that make you smile, and this game has moments that make you think, and the game has moments that make you tear up mm-hmm. uh, sometimes. There are moments that you're just like, and you, you, there are moments where you have to pause, where I had to pause the game, and I go, all right, I need to take a moment to think Rest about what peace, just happened. Mobile. I need to. Oh my God! And Kage, yeah. Uh, you. There are moments where you just have to think about what happened, and you go, 
all right, I need to just think about this. I need to reflect on this. And then you go back into the game and you play and you go, all right, I'm ready. All of that being said, there was something special in this game and I can't quite hit it. He is absolutely right. This game is an eight and a half solid. I have in my own personal experience thought that it's an eight, seven, five, because it's not quite a nine. There are some things there that don't bring it up to a nine. There's some glitches Again, that happen. Glitches. There's, there's some repetitive mission structure there, towards yeah, the end. Yeah, there's um, especially towards the end, but it's not quite a nine. I do feel that it is better than an eight and a half, but to give you guys a solid number, the drink with crazy official number is an eight and a half. This is an 8.5 out of 10 solid. I feel personally, me personally, that it's an 8.75 or an 875 out of a thousand. Um, if we're going to go with those big numbers, but it's an 875 for me personally. Um, but I would strongly recommend that you go and you buy Ghost of Tsushima. This is, a very, you, this is a very worthwhile game. You will not regret it. And just experience what we have experienced and what so many gamers have experienced and see the history behind it and the respect to the Japanese culture mm -hmm. because even Japan is, is, well, is fallen in love with this game. Well, it's They finally got their... Uh, we love, especially here in America, we love our stories about knights in shining armor. And cowboys. And, and ca cowboys, yeah. especially here in America, but knights in shining armor, and then that would, you know, Europe loves those too. And then, but you don't see a lot of those kinds of stories for the Japanese culture and truly be Japanese culture and not some and weird I, amalgamation of just. Of just Asian culture, yeah. absolutely. And I think guys. And so the fact that they, even they're saying, you know, yeah, you did pretty good. I mean, that's pretty darn good for a Western studio to get that close. Yeah. And so, Sucker Punch. You guys have absolutely earned some clout off of this, and I really do hope well, that you guys... They already had some. Infamous was really good. I, and so that's part of the reason I wanted to check this one out is because it's the guys that made Infamous. Sucker Punch, if you make a Ghost of Tsushima 2, you've already earned my money. Yep. See you guys in 1281. <laughs> See you guys in 1281. And with yeah. with that, guys, this is an 8.5 and a strong recommend it's Very strong us. recommendation. And hopefully you enjoyed this review, and we will see you all next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.